Matthew chapter 17, verses 14 through 21. If you are there, would you just shout, glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. We believe that we are in one accord. Here is a reading of the word. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oftentimes he falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long will I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth out not but by prayer and fasting. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, turn to your neighbor, God's talking about faith. That's the topic today, faith. We all need that faith. Amen. We're talking today about faith. Tell your neighbor the subject is faith. Amen. The first thing I want you to understand is that these, Jesus says, has a, had a lack of faith. Uh, look at your neighbor and tell him a lack of faith hinders success. The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. And so in lieu of that, you can't access God without faith. And the Bible said every good and perfect gift cometh from above. So everything that we're going to get, we're going to get from God, but it has to come by faith. And a lack of faith has often hindered many of our successes. Just going through the motions is not enough. The Bible says even when we pray in James chapter 5, our prayer should be effectual and fervent prayer. And sometimes our prayers are not answered because we don't really pray. We just traditionally go through the motions. We say a few things that sound to ourselves entertaining. And oftentimes our prayers are basically to sound good to appease ourselves. But here James talks about the effectual and fervent prayer. I believe he's talking about snot running down your nose. I believe he's talking about tears running all down the back of your face. I believe he's talking about crying out to God like it was your last day. Effectual and fervent prayer. When you ask mother or daddy for something. You ask for something you really need. Oftentimes, you do it with absolute tear-filled looks on your faces. And there were times when you act, you had them big puppy dog eyes, looking like a little cocker spaniel. And it's hard for a mother or father to refuse a cocker spaniel look. Some of y'all got it down to science. <laughs> My wife, amen, she knows how to work that way. Sometimes we have to understand the significance of not just praying, but the way that we pray. Uh, sometimes the way you come and approach, uh, the approach is absolutely needful. To have the correct approach can open doors for you, but the wrong approach can make you miss everything. You could be talking about your Christian for 30 years and not have an eye wall to cry with. No, but God promised us that he would bless us. He said, I would bless you in the city. 
I'll bless you in the country. I'll bless you coming in and you're going out. I'll open up doors nobody can close. Said I'll close doors nobody can open. I'll make a way for you out of no way. I'll bless your seed. Ooh, good God from on high. God said, not only I bless you, I bless your children too. But you got to have faith. You have to believe in your heart. Faith is developed by hearing. Bible said faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. But the greater level of faith comes by prayer. Prayer. Stretching out before God. Which strengthens your relationship with God. Stretching out before God. Getting in the face of God. Getting all up in the face of God to such a degree where you know that he's there. See, you can have a big brother. And all the, the people in town fear your big brother. And when your big brother's there, you know you can talk a little smack. Amen. And when you look around and see your big brother's not there, your tone might change. Come on, talk to me in here. You don't talk all that smack because some of them guys will say, well, what's all that trash he was talking right there? <laughs> but as long as your big brother's there and you know that his presence is around, you can stick your chest out and talk smack. Yeah. When you know the Lord is there, yeah. your faith level is increased. Yeah. That's why prayer is a greater level because when you pray, the Bible says God will inhabit the praises of, your, of his people. Prayer is a type of praise and honor to God. It summons him. It's saying, I can't do it. I'm dependent upon you. That's why I'm calling on you. I know you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or imagine according to the power that's working in us, even our faith. And so when God sees you praying, he comes right there to meet your request. And the longer you pray, the more of his presence gets on you. The longer you stay in the water, the wetter you get. The longer you stay in the fire, the hotter you get. That's why the Lord said, I will that you be hot or cold. Because if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. I want somebody to just dip on in here. Get wet with God. Get full of the glory of God. I want you to pray all night long. The Bible said Jesus prayed all night long. And he was prepared for the journey. But his disciples laid there and went to sleep on the job. And because of it, when the opposition came, they had no power to fight. They had no spiritual strength. Oh, Peter had some physical strength. Peter will cut your ear. Don't mess with Peter. Peter will butcher you. Amen. And tell the devil he did it. Peter was a bad motor scooter. But when it came to faith, his faith was shallow. And the Bible said when it really got hot, Peter ran out on Jesus. Started fudging and lying and carrying on. And the Bible said they start identifying Peter. Well, wasn't you one of them? No, you are lie. I wasn't with him. Don't even know him. Never saw the man. <laughs> Peter started denying him because he had no inward strength. He had no gumption. Sometimes we can get tough. We got a gun and we got a knife. They catch you without your gun, your knife. We see what you really made of. But your prayer time allows you to know that the Lord is right there with you. That even though the opposition is greater, your God is greater than your opposition. See, you got to understand we all are in need of faith. Scripture says that even Jacob, he was a trickster. You remember Jacob the trickster? Jacob, the Bible said his name was trickster. Jacob, that's what it meant, trickster. He was always trying to hustle to get his. He was always trying to cut a corner to get his. He, he didn't want to work. He wanted to shoot craps. No, no. He, he, he didn't want a decent job. He wanted to go to Las Vegas. Jacob was a hustler. He'd rather sell some dope than get an honest job. He tried to find some way to beat you, to trick you. No, Jacob had to find a way to write a bad check. That's Jacob. Jacob was a trickster. But the Bible declared that when it got real hot because he had tricked the wrong person. Sometimes you can trick the wrong person and you can't get no rest. I, I, I met a man a long time ago. I knew he was an old guy. He used to tell me, he said, man, you know, I can go anywhere in the world. And I didn't get what he was saying at first. And it finally hit me. He was saying, I don't have any enemies. 
I don't have nobody to worry about. So he could rest in his bed. So God allows adversity in order to test and to build your faith. When God wants to build your faith, he places the possibilities before you. He allows you to see the possibilities. He allows your test to come to make you strong. It was a test, amen, that David had to endure that gave him faith enough to overcome the giant that he defeated. And at the time of his great test against that giant, the Bible said David spoke. He gave his testimony. 1 Samuel 17, 36, because David sang, I slew both a lion and a bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine, amen, shall be as one of them. Seeing how he had defied the armies of the living God. The Lord delivered me out of the palm of the lion and the bear. And the Lord shall deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. That's what David said. Sometimes you got to learn how to speak up. And declare your testimony. For the Bible said we overcame by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of our testimony. And we love not our lives unto death. His test gave him a testimony and built up his faith so he could speak to his circumstances. When God knows you got to go through some stuff, but you're going through for a testimony. When you know the will of God, when you know God's word, it gives you confidence in God that he that began a good work in you shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ God is looking at you and he's saying unto you I am the Lord your God I'm the master builder I'm building you up in faith every trial you've gone through everything you've had to deal with it was me putting you through it the Bible said the steps of a good man are being ordered by the Lord you ought to say order my steps God but I got to have faith knowing he is with you in confidence and he's a confidence builder when you're with the Lord you know that the Lord is with you when you look back over your life and you realize all the stuff you had to come out of that you shouldn't have came out of you know you didn't make it all by yourself so now your faith is elevated you got a different kind of praise you got a real praise because of all you've gone through. The praise is down in your belly. Can you say yeah? You ain't praising like everybody else prays. Your praise has validity. Your praise has meaning. You know God for yourself. Knowing this, that the trial of your faith work at patience and patience work it by love and the God of your salvation. Yeah, it's going to strengthen you, establish you, that you might be perfect, entire, and wanting nothing. Everything you've gone through is to establish you as a child of the Most High. Because the Bible said that the just shall live by faith. Say, say yeah. Hallelujah. Woo! I got, no, 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 no. I got to take my seat. But I want you to understand. Peter, the Bible said, stepped out. And for a while, he had the victory. But somewhere along the line, he got distracted. And the scripture said, while he was in the water, bubbling and good gluing trying to come up out of it somewhere in the midst of it I believe the Lord felt his heart and the Bible said the Lord reached down and grabbed the whole of Peter some of y'all lost faith but God knows your heart and that's why you're coming out of it touch your neighbor and say neighbor I might not have the faith that I used to have but I know that the Lord I serve will not leave me like I found me. I've got faith for the journey that the Lord's going to bring me through. If he brought me through the last one, he's going to bring me through this one. Say yeah. Say yeah. 